Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Emer McKeown. Today's top stories. It took Waterford councillors nine hours to pass a budget last night. Boris Johnson's described his party's victory in the UK general election as a political earthquake. Thousands of people in businesses, workplaces and schools across Waterford City and County are wearing red today. And in sport, Sean Michael O'Regan was elected as the new county board chairman at last night's annual convention in Dungarvan. Worshford Council has approved a 2.5% increase to commercial rates. However, three quarters of businesses will not receive any increase due to a tax rebate. The measure came as part of a budget devised by Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, Labour, Greens and Independents. Fine Gael's John Cummins proposed the tax rebate. It has always been our stance that we will seek to minimise the impact on ratepayers and SMEs, the very same people that some on the other side of the House have been shouting about over the last number of weeks. What I'm proposing is to introduce a rates rebate scheme which will result in 75% of all ratepayers in Watford City and County not receiving any increase in rates. They're the very small and medium-sized enterprises that are the lifeblood of our city and town centres. Fianna Fáil's Eddie Mulligan backed the budget. We believed tonight it was time for the political games to end and that Watford City didn't need a dictator in the forms of a commissioner. So for us, on behalf of Fianna Fáil, to, to ensure that the city and county could perform economically going forward through the elected members... Boris Johnson has visited the British Queen after winning the biggest Conservative majority since the 1980s. Johnson's party won almost 50 additional seats, securing a comfortable majority in Parliament. Our political correspondent, Sean Defoe, has this report. Well, my friends, good morning, everybody, my friends. Well, we did it. We did it. We pulled it off, didn't we? Boris Johnson won a comfortable majority in this election. He ran on a simple message, one he says he intends to follow through on. So with this mandate and this majority, we will at last be able to do what? It was an awful day for Labour, however, with leader Jeremy Corbyn saying he won't lead them into the next election. He says, though, he's still proud of the campaign. We did not descend into the gutter. We did not undertake personal abuse. The Lib Dems lost leader Joe Swinson to the SNP on a disappointing day. Nicola Sturgeon is taking the backing of her party to lead renewed calls for Scottish independence. There is a clear desire and endorsement for the notion that Scotland should not be landed with a Boris Johnson government and ripped out of Europe against her will. Tisha Cleo welcomed the result, saying he hopes it can get things moving on Brexit. We had for a few years a parliament that wasn't able to form a majority around anything. We now clearly have a majority. Parliament is likely to reconvene next week when Boris Johnson will pass the Brexit withdrawal agreement he negotiated with Brussels, allowing the UK to leave the EU in January. Sean Defoe, Leinster House. For the first time, there were more nationalists from Northern Ireland elected to the House of Commons than unionists. Sinn Féin keeps at seven MPs, the SDLP won two, while the DUP dropped two to eight. Martin Kenny, Sinn Féin TD for Sligo Leitrim, says a united Ireland is now a certainty. I think a possibility is no longer the situation. It's, it's inevitability. It's now a project. It's not a, it's a vision or, or something that's way out in there in the future. It's a project that we now need to start planning for and working for that over the next number of years we can have a situation in place where we'll have that uh, poll on unity. And I think when that happens, it will be won and we will move into a transition period where the 32 counties of Ireland will be governed as one. Guardia are investigating a number of burglaries in Worshford City yesterday. Three houses were broken into at Maple Close, Carcanard, six crossroads between 9am and 5.15pm. Entry to the properties was gained by forcing the front door in one incident, the front window in another and the rear window in the third incident. All three houses were ransacked. Guardia are appealing for anyone who noticed anything suspicious or out of the ordinary in the area to contact them on 051 305-300. The 350 members of West Washford Golf Club, which is up for sale with an asking price of one and a half million euro, are hoping an investor can be found. The club was developed by Pat and Nora Spratt in 1991 and has been in family hands ever since. Club president Pat Murphy says there has been interest in the club. You know that there is uh, at least one very serious 
investor out there who is very interested in continuing the golf course here. I don't know who that person is. If there is a serious investor out there, the members here are 100% behind that investor and will continue to support the club. Counterfeit goods worth €18,000 have been seized at a house in County Tipperary. Detectives carried out a search at a house in Mountain View in Carrick on Shore yesterday evening. They seized suspected counterfeit footwear, clothing, handbags and cosmetics, labelled as Nike, Adidas, Ted Baker, North Face and Hugo Boss. No arrests have been made, but Gardaí say they're following a definite line of inquiry. Sleet and snow can be expected in parts of the country as the weather gets colder this weekend. The west and northwest of the country are expected to see most of the wintry showers, with temperatures dropping as low as minus three degrees. In addition, Met Erin says we can expect some strong winds. Meteorologist Joanna Donnelly hasn't ruled out a weather warning being issued. Our warning level for cold weather jumps in at minus four degrees, I think, so that's, it has to be pretty cold to get a cold weather warning. We'll probably see maybe some possibility of a warning level for lying snow, but we'll be keeping a close eye on whether that happens or not. That will be in the west and in the northwest. Three people have died from the flu so far this winter season. 324 people have also been hospitalised, according to figures from the Health Protection Surveillance Centre. The official monitoring threshold was crossed last week, as GPs across the country reported a sharp increase in flu cases. Flu sets in far more quickly than a cold, and symptoms include a high temperature, body aches, a dry cough and a headache. Dr John Cudahy says avoiding contact with people is the best way to stop the illness spreading. Stay out of school or work or crash while they're symptomatic and until their symptoms have completely um, resolved. And that usually takes between five and seven days. And people who develop the symptoms of flu as well, it's uh, important that they would um, cough or sneeze into a tissue, dispose of the tissue immediately in a bin and wash their hands. Businesses and schools across Waterford are a sea of red today. Thousands of people have signed up for Red to Work to raise vital funds for the local St Vincent de Paul. It's part of the WL or Christmas Appeal. Maria Creed is from University Hospital Waterford. She spoke to WL or's Jeff Harris. We're having a great morning so far. Um, so we're all set up here for the We're Red to Work. A load of prizes to raffle off, selling tickets to beat the band now. And um, we've just finished um, a staff mince pie bake-off. So who won Paula Curtin. Paula Curtin is um, our Director of Nursing for Midwifery and she just won it. And Dr Jimmy Lyons, he's a consultant in East this year and he um, kindly was the judge for us for the day and he was fantastic. WLR Sport And a very good afternoon. I'm Gavin Whelan. Starting with Gaelic Games and Sean Michael O'Regan was elected as the new county board chairman at last night's annual convention at a packed Lawler's Hotel in Dungarvan. He's the first uh, kill clubman to take up the position and he says that it's a great privilege. You know, you're, you're involved in the GA like most people in the county that are involved in the GA all your life, you know. And to, so to get to be, you know, a chairman of the county board is a huge honour. It really is a huge honour. And, um, you know, I suppose I'm steeped in the GA tradition, you know what I mean? And my, my late father, which is going back a long time now, unfortunately, he probably, you know, he brought me into that arena, into the GA arena, and it just festered from there. And all my uncles and anybody else related or friends, it, it, it's just the GA, and it's just that's what we're all about, you know. And, Brendan Tobin of Schlievegua St Mary's was elected Central Council Delegate, defeating Tom Cunningham by 83 votes to 58. You can catch the full interview with Sean Michael O'Regan and Lorna Porca with Tomás from 10 past 6 this evening. He'll also be chatting to the new Waterford hurling boss, Liam Cahill, ahead of the 2020 season. Meanwhile, the Treasurer of the Waterford County Board says it was, a pl- it was pleasing to record another surplus on the 2019 accounts. These were presented to club delegate- delegates at last night's meeting, with the board posting a profit of €47,317. John Jackson says it was a positive meeting over Overall. Well, it was, Gavin. Yeah, but, um, as you said, plenty healthy debate, a lot of changes at the top table, no chairman, no Munster Council delegate, no Central Council delegate, etc., etc. So it was a good good convention, business-like, went on for the bonds of three hours, uh, a lot of good discussion on the accounts and championships and various things. So uh, good healthy state and a fine turnout of delegates on the night. 
Staying with Gaelic Games and Owen Kearns has claimed the final W. Laura Granville Hotel GA monthly award. He picks up the December accolade. The St. Mary's top score was man of the match in the county junior hurling final win over Ballydern with seven points as the Tornina men ended a 30 year famine. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp has signed a new four and a half year contract at Anfield. The new deal keeps him at the club until at least 2024, having take, taken over in October 2015. The German boss says it wasn't a difficult decision to continue on in the the job. We love it here. That's first and foremost. Um, it's a wonderful club. We we really feel home. We meanwhile understand most of the people and I thought it's a good moment to continue this thing. And the club was interested as well in, in that fact and so we did it. It was not a difficult negotiation I think but maybe we have to ask Mike Gordon again about that but I, I felt really good during that time. The Munster team to play Saracens at Allianz Park tomorrow shows one change as tight head prop John Ryan comes in to make his 150th appearance for the province. The Saris makes 12 changes from last week ahead of the clash in North London. Waterford's Jack O'Donoghue is named among the replacements in the Munster team. And finally to Snooker where Antrim's Mark Allen is in the quarterfinal action at the Scottish Open in Glasgow this afternoon. The reigning champion is level at one all in his last eight clash with Scott Donaldson. That is the latest on WLOR. More at two.